Verna Felipe, ICUD DR Coordinator for Educational Programs and Regional Support. While waiting for others to join, let me make some announcements. If you are a faculty member from higher learning institutions, we invite you to sign up for membership. To learn more about ICUDDR, we invite you to visit our website at www.icuddr.org. The link to webinars, conferences, and workshops can be found there. Um, I guess we... Hold on a second. Did I hang? No. No. Okay, thank you. Because like I, I saw people I'm trying to admit. So welcome to the... Um, second session on examining mechanism and foundational processes, an introduction to mediation and moderation. Our speaker for today did a great job in last week's session, wherein he reviewed the concepts of regression and the fundamentals of mediation. The recording is available on ICUDDR's YouTube channel, and if you can't find it, just send me or Caleb a message and we'll send you the link. As a gentle reminder, kindly ensure that your microphones are turned off. For questions, type them in the chat box and our speaker will address them at the end of his presentation. Translations for closed captions in various languages are available. To turn on this feature, click the CC icon at the bottom of your screen. And if it's not showing, click the more then the CC icon. Turn on translation and select the closed caption languages of your choice. So this webinar is being recorded. Our speaker, Dr. Neptali Joel Bator, has a PhD in Addictive Disorders and Recovery Studies from Texas Tech University and is currently an assistant professor at the Department of Human and Family Development Studies, College of Human Ecology, University of the Philippines, Los Banos. He is a Philippine registered psychometrician and a licensed professional teacher. His program of extension and community engagement focus on individual and family resilience, adolescent and adult development, gender and sexuality, mental health and psychosocial support, and substance use in marginalized and minoritized community, especially among sexually and gender diverse subpopulations. He also has several publications on the aforementioned subject. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I turn your attention to Dr. Butor. Sir? Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Verna, and uh, good day, everyone. Uh, for those who came in last time, um, thank you for joining us again today. And for those who are um, joining us just today, welcome to this discussion on mediation and moderation. So just like what uh, Ms. Verna said earlier, uh, in day one, we had an ex exhaustive discussion on simple and uh, multiple linear regression and its assumptions, uh, mainly because uh, these statistical strategies are important in what we are doing. Then we started our discussion on mediation analysis, which we will continue today. The larger portion of what we're going to talk about today is moderation analysis and we'll end also with a discussion of salient issues in moderation. During the last session we had the following bottom lines. First we talked about what a model is and we said that a model is a representation of reality. We also mentioned that the crux of what we're doing is building models. We're trying to represent the world uh, through the data that we gather and through the, the statistical strategies that we are using. And this process of, of representing the world, of building these models, is a reflective, it's, it's, it's a complex process. It's a reflect, I, I would say it's a reflective process because you, you think about reality as is as you do statistical analysis and we wanted to make uh, this representation this model of the world uh, reflective of complex realities the complexity and the, the beautifully diverse uh, world that we are in then finally we said that mediation is just a process of modeling indirect processes it is just trying to understand the relationship of a variable 
a predictor or explanatory variable with an outcome variable, then factoring in another variable which plays a role as an intermediary in this relationship. This slide is um, showing us the mediation model that we discussed last time. So we were trying to make some hypotheses. We're trying to understand the mechanism that links distressing event with alcohol consumption. And based on our reading of the literature, based on our understanding of reality, which we get through our practice in helping people, we had a hypothesis, we had an educated guess that the association between these two is influenced by uh, negative affect, that it is actually through negative affect that distressing event is related to alcohol consumption, and thus this triangle that you are seeing on the left. We also showed different ways of approaching this model statistically using different softwares, but in, in this example, we are showing M plus, which, as I mentioned last time, is a really powerful tool. I am not part of the team who developed M plus, but as a consumer of these softwares, I find M plus very versatile and very powerful, especially if you're handling larger data and very complex models. So on the right is an example of a syntax using M plus. As you can see, it only takes a few lines to be able to estimate a mediation model. Uh, the model here shows the relationship between distress and alcohol use. Then on the red, on uh, highlighted in red is negative affect. So this is basically what we added on the simple regression that we estimated last time, which is alt use on distress. We added negative affect. Then we hypothesized, we ha had a belief that negative affect is also an outcome of distressing event and the predictor of alcohol consumption. Then we also showed these model parameters that we get from the estimation process using M+. Most important to look at are the slopes, which could be unstandardized or standardized. We mentioned that unstandardized parameters or estimates are calculated and are reflected on the raw metrics, on the metrics of the tool or the measurement uh, tool that we use to assess that particular variable. And the way we interpret the slopes is similar to how we interpreted them in the regression model that we talked about prior going to mediation. For example, in this slide, we are seeing that for every one unit increase, in a negative affect, there is 1.22 increase in alcohol use. And for distress, for every one unit increase in distress, there is 0.259 increase in alcohol use. So that these are showing direct relationships of these variables, both the predictor and the mediator with the outcome. And the, the path a that we are seeing in this figure on top is represented by this next line here, distress, negative affect on distress. So this only means that for every one unit increase in distress, there is 1.589 increase in negative affect. So these values that we are seeing, we have we can you can possibly think of this model as a as a multiple regression model with an underlying belief or hypothesis in mind regarding the association between the predictors. So that's one way of putting at, uh, putting this uh, example in perspective. Then in, in most softwares that we're going to use, we will be able to draw the standardized value, which as we mentioned last time, is nothing more than just the slopes in standard deviation units. So just like how we interpreted the regression, what this is saying is that for every 0 0.074 unit increase in distress, 
there is uh ah, sorry for every one unit increase in distress there is 0 0.074 unit increase in alcohol use and the same goes with the other values that we are seeing we're also seeing on the right the rightmost column the p value for these parameter estimates and uh, in the social sciences our uh, p value most often the p value that we are using is p less than 0 0.05 so that that is our uh, basis for for making a decision whether the the estimate is statistically significant or not but as you might have encountered in your prior training p values can it's not the 0 0.05 is not the only p value that we use in certain cases we use 0 0.01 some softwares would even uh, yield uh, p values of less than 0 0.01 so m plus as you can see here re provides us with the actual p value and in 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 thousands uh placeholder so three three digits as we're seeing here very important in the mediation model is the, the the concept of indirect effects because this is actually the the main thing of what we're doing in a mediation analysis we're trying to estimate if the indirect effect of this distress to alcohol use via negative affect is significant or not and thus software will also provide us with this indirect effects then indirect effects can also be unstandardized or standardized. So as we see here, the indirect effect is significant, which means that we can conclude that there is a mediated relationship between alcohol distress and alcohol use through negative affect. Okay. This is another way of showing the indirect effects only in standardized metrics. As you're probably are realizing now, the discussion on regression is very important. If there is any confusion in, in, in making sense of mediation model results, we always go back to simple regression, multiple regression as our basis. All those parameters that we estimated there are going to help us make sense of a mediation model. And thus, my emphasis on model building, we always start uh, with the small model, then make the model more complex. With that being said, there are other mediation models that we can estimate. And um, in this slides, what you are seeing is that we are still looking at the relationship bet between distressing event and alcohol consumption, and we still see the, mediate, the negative affect as a, a mediator, but we are adding another one. For example, positive affect. Now, the important thing I think in this in this kinds of models where you have multiple mediators, you have to have a theory in mind, as always, when you're adding variables. So in this parallel mediation model, there, there is a specific assumption that I'm ha having about affect. And the assumption that I have about, about affect here is that negative and positive affect can co-occur. And there, there are probably theories that, are, that is going to support that kind of assumption. So it's very important that we go back to prevailing theories, prevailing models and hypotheses when we are doing this uh, model building, when we are doing when, when we are trying to make and estimate more complicated models. So it's called parallel mediation because both the mediators are both the mediators are positioned in parallel with one another. So we are assuming that distressing event would have independent associations with these two, and then these two would have independent associations with alcohol consumption, as you can see here. Another very common mediation model other than the, the, the simple mediation model that we estimated earlier, is a serial mediation. It's serial because we have an assumption that the moderator, the second moderator that we are having or we are adding on the model, has an association with the other mediator that we are having. So for example, in this figure, we are seeing still the distressing event X 
uh, is associated with alcohol consumption, we are still seeing negative affect here. But we are adding rumination as our first mediator. And, and there is a line from rumination to negative affect. The belief that I have here is that distressing event would probably increase rumination, repeated thinking, unstoppable, un, un, uh, unstoppable thoughts, which have an effect on the feeling, on the affect, which eventually have an effect on alcohol consumption. So there is also a theory, a model that I have in mind uh, in when I added rumination in this uh, model that I that we are estimating. So we can go as we can have as many mediators as we think fit uh, based on our study. We could have uh, a very long serial mediation model. Or there, although there are some limitations and some uh, con considerations when we do that. And we will talk about it as we talk about the salient issues in mediation. There are some things that we have to consider when we talk about mediation or when we estimate mediation models. And one of that is the, the debate about whether mediation should always always show temporal precedence between the ver between the variables. So what am I trying to say with this temporal precedence? Say, for example, in the distressing event as our predictor that the, the mediator is negative affect, one of the assumptions of the mediation model is that of a mediation is that negative affect happens, I mean, distressing event happens first, then Negative affect happens next. Then last that happens is alcohol consumption. So there's a temporal order in these mediator variables. So there's that kind of assumption also in mediation because there, that, that's the indirect process that we are trying to model. However, in most of the studies that we are doing, we are using cross-sectional data, which means that we only gather data on, on a certain time point, on one at one time point. And therefore, we, the, the temporal precedence requirement is only an assumption that we have. Because truly, if we are to satisfy the temporal precedence assumption, then our design should be different. We shouldn't only be gathering data using cross-sectional surveys. We should have longitudinal uh, design in, in gathering data. And that's the only time that we can assume, we can assure, say, for example, we get a uh, distressing event at time one, then we get negative affect at time two, and at time three, we get alcohol consumption. So that's the, the temporal precedence piece there. But what just like what I, I was saying earlier, this is not always the case in, in the studies that we are doing. Uh, for several reasons. One's, one is it's somehow resource intensive to do longitudinal design. Sometimes we don't have the resources. Sometimes we don't have the uh, the, the participants to, to be followed in, in, in that kind of long-term process. So therefore, the temporal precedence may not be satisfied always. There is some a contemporary discussion going on because in the field, at least in the field of psychology, there still are there's still a high use of cross-sectional mediation, as we call it, in 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 journal articles. They still it still gets published, and researchers still believe that this is a, a process which is which is, which is good in, in modeling what is happening in, in reality. So what Klein, one of, the, one of the authors which has a really good book in structural equations model, what Klein emphasized, especially in the recent versions of, of the book in structural equations model is that, yes, the temporal precedence piece may be very difficult to satisfy in most cases, but at least there should be modularity in the, in the model. And by modularity, what 
Twine is saying is that at least there should be a reason to believe that distressing event and negative affect are separate constructs that can happen separately or in, in separate times. So there, these should not be exactly the same variables. They should be different variables that could happen independently. And that's the concept of modularity. So this is a, an ongoing discussion in the field, but for us who are wanting to examine our models and get published, share our models to the world or share our findings to the world, cross-sectional mediation is still a, th a thing nowadays. Now, another salient issue has something to do with the reporting of mediation models. Related to the causal debate, whether temporal precedence should be there or should should always be satisfied or not, some journals that, uh, that you submit to made some solution on that debate or made a stand on that debate that yes, you can use cross-sectional mediation, but you have to report your mediation model results using associational language rather than causal language. So say, for example, instead of the word predict or, or causes or, if, or effect, you use the word uh, associated with, linked to, um, more like in the in the language of correlation. So this is another issue that, that we have when we use mediation models, especially if you are um, estimating very, very large or very, very complex models. Some journals would not mind as long as you put in the in your limitations that what are the limitations of a cross-sectional mediation, but other journals would ask us to report it in associational language. Another salient issue in mediation is estimation decisions that we have. In the last, uh, in, in day one, we talked about bootstrapping approach over maximum likelihood approach and what are the strengths and, and limitations of that. For, for instance, the bootstrapping approach in estimating and testing indirect effects uh, is preferred because there is an assumption that it, it doesn't have an assumption that the indirect effect is normally distributed. So that is also something that you have to make an executive decision to whether you will bootstrap or not bootstrap. But just know that this is a thing and that depending on the journal that you submit to or the, the pool of experts reviewing your results, they may ask you to do this. The good thing is if you're using M plus or other other softwares, it, it's very easy to to make use or to estimate this these kinds of models and and use this bootstrapping method. Uh, it's just a matter of like a two lines of code or a, a, a step in the in the estimation process. Uh, that's the good thing that that we have now the technology and the computational power to do this without having to go without having to calculate it on our own. Another issue in mediation and in all of this quantitative procedures is me, me handling missing data. So before the, the common approach is to delete uh, missing cases, but in modern and contemporary practice, we already have applied missing data analysis. And if you're interested to read more about it, there is a good book by Craig Enders, which is really talking about how to handle missing data properly. So the common approaches now is to use full information maximum likelihood, which is very easily implemented in M+, just like what I showed you last time, that you use ML as your estimator. Another approach is imputation. It's more complex. It's more intensive. So this is something that you have to make um, a decision again. Now, if your software doesn't allow for more modern approaches in, in handling data, then you are left, of course, with whatever your software provides, but just acknowledge it as a limitation of, of your uh, approach, of the statistical approach that you did. 
Another salient issue is the use of software. And uh, I had an awesome email through Ms. Verna last time talk, asking about whether mediation could be implemented using SPSS, which most of us probably has our first experience of using. Like I remember SPSS also was the first entry point that I had in statistics because uh, at least in the Philippines where I, I had my, my bachelor's degree, SPSS is widely used. Um, the good thing is that there are free macros that we can use. So for if you're using SPSS, then you can just download process macro, download it and, and in, in add it on your software. It's a free macro, which I think you can, I don't have my SPSS active now, but there, there is a way that you can add it on, on your base SPSS. And it should have all the facility to estimate most of the models that we are discussing in, in the past two days. So this is, by the way, developed by Andrew Hayes, who also wrote a very, very good book on um, indirect and conditional process models. That's that's one of the, the book that I always go back to every time I, I run mediation and moderation analyses. Then finally, another an issue in mediation, actually this is not an issue, but more of a an, an insight, which I also realized when I attended a, a training under Dr. Hayes in, in one of the summer trainings that he had, is that there there is no perfect quantitative data analytic process, just like there, there is no perfect research. But in, in quantitative procedures, there are three things that we consider. First is, is theory. We should have a solid theory. We should have a solid design. And, and by design, I'm talking about sampling, sampling procedures or how you design whether you're going to use cross-sectional or longitudinal design to gather your data. And last is model estimation. In these two-day sessions, we only talked about model estimation and some theory and a little design. But uh, the point that he was making during that training was that, say for instance, in the debate whether cross-sectional or longitudinal data could be used in mediation, we have to evaluate that using this trifecta of quantitative procedures. Probably in terms of design, there is a limitation, but we compensate that with really modeling the data conscientiously and uh, with with rigor in our methods. So then theory, of course, is underlying all of this. So these are things that we consider uh, when we are estimating mediation model, we're doing reg regression, even when we do moderation, which we will be discussing in, in, a, in a couple of minutes from now on. I always like going back to the salient issues because these are also very good reflection points every time we make generalizations about the results in a mediation model. And this also helps us position or clearly articulate the limitations of our data analytic process. All right. Now let's go to moderation. And um, moderation essentially is an approach of examining conditional processes. I wanted to start mediation by going back to the very, very first model that we had. So us seeing again, like a group of uh, people drinking in a bar and trying to make sense, why are these people drinking? And if you remember in our day one, we had the belief that probably these people are consuming alcohol because of an experience of a distressing event. And we model that using this conceptual framework on the top, we said our X, our predictor explanatory variable is distressing event and our outcome is alcohol consumption. And the question that we were asking, we articulated it as this one, does experiencing distress lead to alcohol consumption? We also modeled it statistically using this one, using this equation of a line, which we have been seeing over and over again uh, in the past two days, wherein our Y, our dependent variable or outcome, 
is equal to the intercept, which is the value of y when x is 0 or when the predictor is 0, plus b1, which is the slope. That is the association between x and y. x is our independent variable, our predictor. If you're using causal language or explanatory variable, then there is the residual or the error in, in our model. And we talked about residual last time. This is how far each point is from the fitted line or from the, from the estimated line that we have. And the difference between what we are doing now and structural equation model, which is another good, it's a more very powerful approach, is that in what we're doing now, we're making assumptions about the residual. And that's why we tested assumptions when we do regression. So we do not make, we do not touch these residuals in what we're doing now, but other, but we're just making assumptions. Say, for example, that our residuals are normal, that our residuals are almost cadastic or equally distributed. So that's why we don't usually talk about the residual in a regression, regression or in a mediation, uh, which is regression based. Then we represented that very simple model as well using a Venn diagram. And what we're saying is that these are just two overlapping circles where in the X and the Y are overlapping and the magnitude of their overlap is the effect of uh, X on Y. Another way that we visualized it is using this plot where in our X is on the X axis, the predictor distressing event is on the X axis on the left is our outcome, uh, that's our y-axis, and that's also our y-variable. And this is the line here showing the relationship between x and y and the how inclined the line is that is our slope. Uh, our slope, if it's flat, then there's no relationship. If it's steep, if it's steep then there's high relationship. The same way that we would analyze a, correlation, a scatter plot in a correlation. However, in the moderation, what we do is that we consider another variable in the that could play a role in this re relationship, such that when we ask the question, does experiencing a distressing event lead to alcohol consumption? Your answer would be, well, probably it depends on something. And this is a very common answer that we that we give in, in the social sciences, in behavioral sciences. Uh, it depends on something. There must be something else which uh, this relationship relies on to. And having that in mind, the it, it depends answer, one of the insights that came to you well Probably it depends on the, on whether the person has social support or not. And the belief that you have probably is that if a person would have high social support, then distressing event wouldn't usually or wouldn't usually lead to alcohol consumption. But if they have low social support, probably that's the time where a distressing event would lead to alcohol consumption. Probably the social support will make the person feel better or instead of leading the person to drink, it would provide an opportunity for the person to explore other options, other coping mechanisms. So these are beliefs that we have. And when our answer to the question is a is an it depend it depends answer, then that is a model that calls for a moderation. So moderation is a model wherein the association between X and Y is conditional on, say for instance, uh, for, for instance, social support on W. We will try, we will la label our moderator first as W. So it's a model wherein the association between X and Y is conditional on a moderator. And in this example, we're calling the moderator W. This very simple model, moderation model that we are seeing now, we're in there is an X box here on the left, a Y on the right, an arrow, and another box on top with an arrow pointing the line 
that's how we usually draw the conceptual diagram of a moderation uh, model could be statistically expressed in this statistical model. So you have the distressing event here as your predictor of alcohol consumption. Then you will add your social support as a moderator. Then finally, you will add the product of your X and your W, your predict the product of your predictor and your moderator. And the most important thing really here, although I highlighted social support because this is what we added, the most important thing here is the interaction between the product between the distressing event and social support. This is what we're going to look to be on the lookout for when we do the analysis. Algebraically, this is how it looks like. So we are still seeing our Y, we're still seeing our slope, BO plus B1X, that's our predictor and the slope of the predictor on Y. Then we add B to W. So this is the slope of the moderator in relation to Y. Then we add B3. So I'm sorry, this should be B3XW. And this is the interaction term, the, the, the product of X and W. Then we have the residual, which we have assumptions about. And we will not bother about E right now. We will talk about E when we go to SEM. More, more important thing here, again, is the W. But most important is the XW, the product of X and W. So how do we represent this using a Venn diagram? So let's just uh, look at uh, social support as either high or, or low. Because of the lack of space, I did not anymore add the average, but there could be average there in the middle. So what we are seeing here still is the 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 inter the the relationship between x and y. So these are still two overlapping circles, but as you can see, there are two there are two ways through which the circles overlap. On the upper part of this of the slide. We, we say if social support is high, then probably there's lesser overlap between X and Y, meaning there's lesser uh, association between distressing event and alcohol consumption. But if social support is low, the overlap between X and Y are greater, which means that distressing event has a greater effect on, on Y. So we now have we, we, we now have two Venn diagrams for each of the level of the moderator. And that is why we're saying that this is a, con a conditional model, conditional process model, because the, the relationship between X and Y is conditional on the social support and our moderator. Another way through which we can represent this one. And I want us to really keep this in our mind because this is what you will usually see in uh, journal articles. This is how you will usually represent um, an, an interaction is through this, this plot. So again, our predictor distressing event is on the x-axis. Our outcome, alcohol consumption, is on the y-axis. Then we see three lines here as opposed to the to the first one the simple regression model we only have one line we only have one line representing the association between x and y but in this one we are seeing three lines the green line is labeled high social support so this is the line when social support is high the red line shows low social support so this is the the line or the, the relationship between X and Y when social support is low. And the blue one says average social support. So this is the relationship between distressing event and alcohol consumption when social support is at the average. Now, what is happening here in this picture? And I'll give you like 15 seconds to wrap, wrap your mind up about what's happening in this picture. So high social support, then average, then low social support. Or we can say 
low social support, average, and high social support. So when, low, when social support is low, the line is steep. Then as social, social support increase, the line gets flatter. And we remember in our prior discussion that when the line is flat, it means that there's no association or the association is really, really low, almost negligible. So what is, what is happening in this line is, or in this figure is this. It, it shows that social support seems to buffer the effect of distressing event on alcohol consumption, such that as social support increases, the effect of distressing event on alcohol consumption becomes almost, or moves towards being almost negligible. Isn't it a great model to, to have? Isn't it a great story to tell in the variables that we are working. We are what we are saying here is that yes, distressing event and alcohol consumption are, you know, positively related. As distressing event increases, alcohol consumption increases. Well, that's the that's the common notion. But there are times when when these two may not be may not be the case. It, de it depends on whether social support is there or not there. And the story now goes to the, the, the line of saying or the, the implication of this is that if this is the case, then why don't we have interventions wherein we increase social support of, for people who are experiencing distressing events so, so that they don't usually end up choosing uh, alcohol as their coping mechanism. So what a wonderful story to tell, especially if we are in the, if we are in making interventions, if you are, uh, you know, really are in the process or in the in the role of helping people reduce their uh, alcohol use or drug use or any problematic or risk-taking behaviors. That's why we love moderation as, uh, as a, uh, an analytic approach. So how do we do moderation analysis? Uh, there, there are lesser steps in the moderation analysis, at least in terms of, of estimation of the, the, the basic model. But there are a lot, there are more tasks to do after doing this. But uh, the first thing is that basically compute the interaction term. So this is just the product of the predictor and W. Then you fit a multiple regression model with X, W, and X, W as predictors. So just one and two, you're able to, you can implement it already on your, on your software. Test whether the regression coefficient for X, W is significant or not. So this is a simple, simple way of saying, look at the p-value of the interaction effect. Then four and five is really important. Four is interpret the moderation effect because a moderation effect could mean many things as we will see in a short while. And finally, display the moderation effect graphically. This is very important because as you can see here, the, the moderation effect really becomes more meaningful if you show it this way. If you represent it graphically using this uh, using this technique or approach of, of graphing. Let's look at model estimation. So here we're using a fabricated data of 100 uh, just because that's the one available. So it could actually a moderation Models would usually need larger sample size because it's usually difficult to to get a significant or to 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 detect a significant a significant uh, interaction term for smaller samples. But for this example, I'm using a hundred just to show you how to do it in M plus and uh and R. So moderation is as you can see here. We're still using distress and alcohol uses or variables. We're only adding those in red. So from the from the simple regression that we 
did earlier last the last time we we're only adding social support then in the define as you can see here we are sub we are recalculating distress by subtracting it to a number and uh this number that we are using here is none other than the mean of distress we're also recalculating social support and what we are doing is we're subtracting a number from social support this is also the 5.37 is also the mean of social support more on that later then we're adding another line as you can see here, int1, or it could be int2, int3, or any line. That's the beauty of M+. Plus. But this is just to remind us that this is the interaction term. And as you can see, it is just distress times social support. Social support. So this is These are the preliminary things that we need to do at the, but if, or to, to define or to prepare first. Then in the model, we just add all of them as instructed. So alcohol use is our outcome on distress. That's our simple regression model. Then we add social support and we add interaction term as another predictors. So this is on the right, upper right. This is how we do it in R. Uh, basically, we're still using LM. If you remember last time, we used the, the base R. Uh, in the formula, we're still using alcohol use as our outcome. Then tilde here, distress plus sock soup, sock soup which is social support plus interaction. So basically the same way of that we that we did this in, in M plus. Now the there are two things that are really important here. One is the interaction. So interaction equals distress times so, uh, social support. Now, I want us to emphasize this one because interpreting moderation is highly influenced by your conceptualization. What do I mean by this? Well, if you see here, statistically, statistically, the software will not distinguish which is your moderator or which is your predictor. Like It doesn't have a way of telling. It's because as it, if you go back to our uh, multiplication, distress times social support is basically the same as social support times this times distress. So the 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 modeling doesn't meet a distinction between these two. Therefore, the whether or not the variable is a moderator is highly highly reliant on our conceptualization. Like in this model. We are social support is our moderator because it, conceptually it makes sense that it is a moderator because of literature, because of theory. So this is an emphasis that I want to make in this in this slide. That's that's one of the important thing here. Statistically, it will not make a distinction. Oh, the distinction is only conceptual and theoretical, and therefore we have to have a solid conceptual and theoretical backing as to why we are using social support as, as our moderator. Um, in my experience, when I'm thinking about moderation or if a, a, a variable is a moderator or, or not, I always go back to prior studies. It may not be about uh, distress and alcohol use. It may be, say, for example, uh, uh, childhood experience uh, or e uh, ALEs, uh, adverse life experiences and uh, well-being or adverse life experiences and depression. And what, what this literature is saying about social support. And in most cases, you would see that social support uh, either mitigates or buffers these associations. So there is a good way of positioning or, or deciding that social support is a good enough moderator as for, for this model. Because in other models, talking about psychological outcomes, social support has been used as a moderator. There would be cases where in variables, in, in prior studies, a particular variable is used as a mediator or as a moderator. 
then you have to have another way of thinking again or not another set of contemplation uh now looking at the moderator in relation to the other variables in your model so it, there is really a lot of reflecting and reading back and um also the the process of observing in you know real life examples also help a lot like is this a lawful uh moderator uh do, do i see this in in actual in, in actual experience of people that their social support somehow buffer or or mitigate their problematic behaviors uh, so th those kinds of of conceptualizing is very much needed in this um in this kind of model another important thing in this slide is uh adjusting the values of the predictor variables in the process called centering. So the center distress socks with grand mean on uh, the red line after just below the word define on the left box is another way of centering the, the variables. And by centering, what we mean is just adjusting the values of the predictor variables by subtracting a meaningful constant. Most often, most often, the, the constant that we subtract to the predictor is the mean. Because uh, if, you, if you remember our normal curve, if you have the mean, then it's very easy for you to, to um, eyeball the, low, the lower values or values that are lower than the mean and the values that are higher than the mean. So it provides you with categories. So the mean, which is your, your average, then positive one or positive two standard deviation below would be your low, then, uh, sorry, negative uh, one or negative two standard deviation below would be your low values, then positive uh, and one, or one or two standard deviations above the mean would be your higher value. So it, it provides you with signposts through which you can make um, meaningful interpretations of your results. Um, in this example, I just showed you how it is done arithmetically because it 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 helps us drive the the concept well. So it could be x minus the mean or x minus constant. In certain cases, you may want to uh, to use a different constant other than the mean uh, as your as your value that you can use for centering as well. Um, an example of that probably would be when when you are you, the, the example that I'm thinking right now and where I usually see it, say for example, you are having age as your as a predictor and you want to center the values on a particular age. Say if, if you want to make your interpretations, relevant vis-a-vis um, -vis the educational system in, in your country. So for example, age is a variable and in, say for, in the, for example, in the Philippines, first year high school students would be roughly around 13 years old. So if I want to make interpretations, those who are about those people who are 13 years old, if, if, I, want to, if I want to make that as a, as a cut, cut off or as a middle point, then I can use 13 as the as a constant that I that where I center my my data on so that that's also possible but in most cases it's the mean of the variable that you use for centering okay so what does centering do well it doesn't it doesn't really make a difference on your on your parameter estimates the parameter estimates that you will that you will have would be still the same except that or 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 would still would still reflect the 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 real estimates but it would just provide you with with a different signpost or um indicator which you can use for the analysis of the of the data so in this example 
uh, let's let's just look at the slope to drive this this uh, the, the the intercept to drive this point. So without centering, your your intercept is the value of y when x is zero, that the the zero row score. But with with centering, your intercept now becomes the value of y when x is at the at the mean or at the center or at the specific constant. In this example, the intercept is the value of alcohol consumption if social support is average or at the mean. So this is this this blue line here, this is the, the mean. That that is if we center social support. So on the same model, what if you have this model wherein distress is the predictor, social support is the moderator, and alcohol use is the outcome. So this is the same model that we are doing. Uh, how, what does the intercept mean? So I already showed it, sh showed out to you. How do you figure out the alcohol use for low average or high social support? So the intercept, again, means this one. But the, the outcome, the value of, of the outcome for the different levels of the moderator that is social support could be now calculated using this, this uh, formula. So the same formula that we used, except that the value of social support that we plug in is different across the, across the different uh, equations. So for the for the average social support, then we plug in the mean social support and we therefore multiply distress with the mean. For low, we are using negative one SD. So this is what I was saying earlier. Uh, then high, we are using positive one SD. Now, the, some questions here would be, is it okay if I use negative two SD? Uh, yes, you can use that as well as your uh, as your signpost for low or high, the only repercussion in using those is to ask yourself: Do I have, do I have data, or do I have cases that falls in the cases that fall in those uh, part of the curve? Like probably most of the participants would fall in between. Um, negative two SD to positive two SD. So you, you you also have to go back to your data, and and look if you have su the sufficient cases to make that kind of of prediction. So it's just simply plugging in the values in this in this formula. The good thing is that software does this for us. But uh, again, like what I mentioned during day one, it's always good to. Uh, to have this information with us. Now, this is how the model parameters look like. This is very familiar to us now because this is this is M plus again. So we have the estimates here. These are slopes and these are the p-values. Uh, the most important thing that we look at here is the interaction or the int one. So the first question to ask is, is the interaction significant? And in this case, it is significant. It is uh, below 0 0.05. And the next question to ask is, what does what, what is the interaction doing? Is it a positive or a negative interaction? So in this case, it's a negative, it has a negative value. Then when we go when we go down to the standardized value, this is again. This is again in um, standard deviation metrics. We're seeing the same. Right. We're also seeing social support as significant, but distress is not significant. Would that be an issue? So that's that's probably another question that's running in in our mind now. The thing about moderation is that both the predictor and the the moderator may not be significant at all as long as the interaction is significant. Because 
this is now what we are looking at. Like we are, we can think about it this way. Um, distressing if distressing event in relation to alcohol use. Well, probably distressing event in in most in in when you're only looking at these two values, distressing event has a significant positive association with alcohol use. That's the, that's the, the base. But it could be possible that that relationship is not any more existent at a particular level level of the moderator. Like in our example, when when the the social support is very high, the slope is flat already. So it could happen that way. So the 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 interest really should be here in the interaction. Okay. So what could happen in a in a moderation or in a uh, in a moderation model? So this is just a simple way of of presenting what what moderation does. So this is the slope of x. This is the slope of the interaction term where the x times w and this is what it what this makes the slope of x so this this is the effect of that interaction on on the slope of x and the interpretation is on the last column so what we are having is our in a sim, in a simple in a simple regression our the relationship the slope, our slope of x on uh, x uh, linked to to y is positive. So alcohol use and uh, alcohol use on the y and predictor distress on the x. So this is how it looks like. So it's uh, slanting towards the right, meaning it's increasing as distress increases, alcohol use increases. But our interaction is negative. So the interaction makes that slope less positive. So it, it it makes the interaction less positive. And therefore, that the role of social support is that of a of a buffer or of a mitigator. So we can now say that social support has a mitigating effect on the relationship between uh distressing event and alcohol use, as we have shown earlier it could also be possible in other cases where in the the interaction is positive then we would conclude otherwise we would say that it is it, it is a magnifier or a synergizer it magnifies the relationship between uh two variables so this is just uh these are just uh ways through which we can interpret the moderation. Right. So this is what happens when the relationship is negative. So the, the last two lines in this in this table. So the slope is negative, meaning as the predictor increase, pre increases, the, the outcome decreases. So this is the effect of uh, the moderator. It can... If the moderator is negative, it makes that relationship more negative, and therefore the slope is is actually is is actually becoming more steep. If the interaction is positive and the sl the, the slope of x on y is negative, as you can see here on the right side. It makes it less negative, and therefore, uh, it 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 makes it nearly negligible in this case. So that's what a moderation does in in a model. One thing that we also need to consider in a moderation model, since now we already know that the interaction has is significant. So there is a significant moderating effect and we want to uh to know what the moderate the moderating effect is doing other than just saying this using this interpretation. Our 
next step would be to do what we call a simple slopes analysis. And uh, simply, this is just putting a term to what I've been discussing earlier, wherein we evaluated the relationship between X and Y with respect to the moderator. So what we've been doing when we're trying to disaggregate the effect of the moderator or different levels of the moderator on X and Y, trying to understand, parse it out, it's basically simple slopes analysis. It's simple slopes because it's it's simpler than the you know the slope that we have. So it 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 simplifies the model by disaggregating the effect of the moderator in the relationship. Now there are two strategies that are commonly used now. Uh, some in some literatures these are called spotlight strategy or spotlight approach. It's a spotlight because it puts the spotlight on the different levels. Uh, and this is done using a simple slopes plot. Fl plot. And there's also a floodlight strategy in, er, wherein you look at the moderator across the, across the board and see uh, how it affects or influences the relationship between distress or on, on alcohol use or your X on your Y. And this could be done using a, what we call a johnson Neiman plot. This is how it looks like. So spotlight strategy disaggregates the effect of X on Y uh, across different levels of social support. But of, of, that's why it's called spotlight. The floodlight strategy is you plot varying levels of, of your moderator on the X and on the Y axis, you plot all the effects of distress and alcohol use. So we are now seeing here, the B here or the, the y-axis on the figure on your right is not anymore the y, but it's the b. It's the effect of distress and alcohol use. And you plot this too uh, using a line here. And uh, there are confidence. The, this highlighted part here, the, the gray area, is uh, what we call the area of, of acceptance or area of significance. We're in the upper line. The upper line is the is the upper limit, and the lower line is the lower limit. Now, in in a Johnson Neiman's plot, the 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 question there is whether the 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 value or the line uh, straddles across zero, which which means that both of the upper and the lower limit should be either both positive or both negative. So if one of the, the limits of the, con because these are confidence interval, if one is positive and the other is negative or vice versa, then we say that, that the, in, the moderation is not significant at that particular point in, the, in this plot. There, there, there are things, these are very interesting reads. You can read more on Johnson Neiman's plot. These are all, these are not as, in, in M plus, you have to do some calculations and the, I, the knowledge about the equation of a line is very easy to, can, can very easily help you uh, conduct the simple slopes analysis. Right. So, so far, we've been talking about uh, continuous, uh, continuous moderators. So for this one, we are not going to delve more on this, but this is just to show you that uh, categorical moderator could also be, is also a thing. Like for example, what if your moderator is assigned sex? Not social support, which is measured in a continuous metrics. The analysis is the same, the estimation is the same. So for example, this is what we're seeing here. So for females, for those who are assigned females, the association between X and Y is steep. For those assigned male, it is flat. So we already have an idea that the effect of distressing event on alcohol consumption seems stronger among assigned females than those who are assigned males. So this can also be another way. Estimation is the same. You just try to replace the variables uh, with, instead of social support, I used sex. Uh, historically, moderation is mostly used for categorical moderators. So this is the, the, the first one. 
um something that would remind us of uh, a Tites or a Nova for categorical mod uh categorical variables. Now the key here is since we cannot center, we don't have a mean to center it. Uh, the important thing here is to create a reference group. So a reference group is usually zero. This is your, uh, in this case, the mill, and the other one is one. So the process is called dummy codings, if, if you have encountered this before already. So it's very easily done if you only have binary variables. Uh, it gets more complicated when you have two or more categories there. But uh, it's easy, very easily done if you have binary. So you just dummy code one as zero, and the other variable or the other variable is one. You also use the same formula and you also have the same interpretation of the intercept. It's still Y when all the X is zero. But in this case, your zero is male. So your slope, your slope here is the value of Y for, for males. And in this one, you're, since this is one, you're, the slope here becomes now the value of y for, for females. So this is now how the categorical bit moderator could be interpreted. There are other moderation models that we can. So what we had is what we call a two-way model, but it can be a three-way model like this. So social support, moderating the relationship between X and Y, and sex, moderating this moderator. So this, this is this possible. Like uh, social support impacts this one, but the social support also differs across or between assigned sex. So this is a three-way mediation. It can also happen this way, wherein you have two or more moderators in the process. So try to think about several variables moderating this uh, simple predict the predictor and the outcome. And in more recently, there is already the integration of mediation and moderation at the same time uh, in a in a model we call which we call conditional indirect effects model or conditional indirect process model, wherein you have a mediation and specific paths of that mediation is moderated or is conditional on a moderator. So this is also uh, a thing. Okay. Other models could be could be found in this QR. So if you have uh if you if you have a QR code uh, I mean of your phone and just get the go to this QR, it will lead you to a, a website where you can see uh, the different types of, of process models and um, conditional models and uh, specific M plus syntax and how you can implement it. Now, in terms of salient issues in moderation, uh, like what I alluded to earlier, power is important because moderation effects are usually, or the signals usually need larger samples so that we can detect it. Uh, question on sample size, the, the answer is, is there a sample size needed? So you, you of course, you test for G power. You can also test this using G power. But for here, more is better. If you have more samples, the better. Another is conceptualization, which I overemphasized earlier, that a variable, whether it is a mediator or a moderator, should be based or should be thought of very carefully based on literature and existing models or um, an anecdotal observations. And simple slopes analysis is key to deeper interpretations. So those are just salient issues in moderation on top of what we talked about in the mediation. Now we are already at the, the near end of this day. And uh, I am just showing you this big family of statistical approaches. Some of the some of these maybe we are familiar of, some are relative new to us, and it's okay because it means that there will be a lot of learning opportunities for us. So 
we are here in this part. We are still in the regression world. And when you expand, when you expand these models into say diff like mediation in, in several variables or you're having different several moderators, then the way to go is path analysis. Then we're only talking about uh continuous outcomes. We haven't talked about categorical outcomes or out outcomes with other distributions other than normal and, and continuous. Now, when we talked about, say, for example, our outcome now is alcohol use, but whether it's a yes, we use alcohol or no, so it's a binary outcome already, then we might need to go out of, the, of these processes and need other forms of statistics that could model the data properly. I'd like to end this again with this bottom line. What we're really doing is that we are modeling the world. We are creating a model. We're trying to simplify our beliefs, our, our representation of the world, and we're trying to test and examine our beliefs about the world. And I hope this will help you do that in your own practice. Uh, happy modeling, happy mediation and moderation analyses. Uh, thank you very much for, for having me today and listening to the presentation. Ms. Verna? Thank you so much, Dr. Butor. Marami pong salamat. Um, if you guys have questions or comments, um, feel free to use the chat box. So I haven't seen any questions for this um, session, but I think though, like one of the questions probably that I would like to ask is that can you combine the two? Like, can you do like a moderation and mediation analysis all in one model? Yes, thank you for asking that question, Ms. Verna. So this uh, is really an interesting model that we haven't delved deeper uh, in the today's session. But uh, in, in contemporary practice, like especially if you want to, to represent more complex realities into the model, you can have mediation and moderation in the same model. So we call it, uh, we call it a moderated mediation model or in, in uh, Andrew Hayes' book, he called it conditional indirect effects model or conditional indirect process. Because you have an indirect process and you are examining that process conditional on a specific variable. Thank you for that. So, sir, what should be the consideration if we want to do that? And guys, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask so that I don't have to ask them questions. So, any yes. considerations for doing this? Thank uh, you. Yes, the, I, I think uh, just the same as I emphasized earlier, that uh, as your model gets more complex, then you should have like more solid and clear theory and, and uh, you know, supporting theory to support that model or you really go to the literature because it means now that you are positioning variables vis-a-vis -vis other variables in the model. So it could, like, why is social support moderator here? Or what do I, what is my, what is my theory behind that? Or what, what is the, what is the body of knowledge, the stat, the stat state of the art telling about social support? So really conceptualization is one. And the other one is, uh, in terms of sample size, as we our model gets more complex, then we need to have more sample sample cases to you know to be able to detect these kinds of of signals. So I think that's the the two main thing that I would I would say. It also becomes computationally intensive. So if you're using R or M plus, sometimes it takes longer time to generate. Uh, parameter estimates for these kinds of models. So you, the, the more complex your model becomes, the more time, computational time and computational resource you will need. And I would like to emphasize again what you have said earlier that sometimes because we think that, and I would call it statistical acrobat, right? Just because building like a complex model and stuff and like using the advanced software, we think that that already is a good research well, in fact, a good foundation would be really what is the literature saying and why are you exploring that? So you go back to your literature, to the existing theory, like read extensively 
and that's when so when you build the model it's on a strong foundation if i should say so yes yes exactly there is a good question here from miss lillian ohani if you're doing a modmed model uh is it a must to test conditional effect uh, the suggestion is to test simple slopes first you know, those those uh, basic things and the fundamental things that we add but there's already a, a direction now or a, this is an emerging um a thing where you should also have a test for conditional indirect effects so the conditional the, the, the there is already um the there is already what we call the index of moderated mediation so this is also discussed in the book of andrew hayes so the index of moderated mediation shows us whether at which level of the moderator that indirect effect is significant or not. So it also it's also an interesting thing that you can read on the uh, index of moderated mediation. Thank you, Lillian. Lillian, by the way, is one of our uh, colleague and friend. Um, can I ask? Yes, Dr. Melgar, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Um. On this on this slide, when you publish it, let's say in a journal, what values do you reflect on inside the boxes? Like how how would I know the strength of social support as a moderator, the strength of negative effect? How would I know that? Thank you very much, Dr. Melgar. So, the, and, and I think this is something that I missed also when I answered uh, Ms. Verna. So, in, in, in current practice, uh, we usually start with a more simple model. So, say, for example, we start with uh, the mediation model first. Then you, you, you should test that model. Then you test another model with the moderator in it. So, the, the the impact of the moderator usually is measured using the change in R squared. So that's that's why you have model one, which is the mediation only model. Then model two, you would have a moderated mediation model. Mm -hmm. So the, the impact of the social support there in that model would, would be indicated by the R squared change. Then in terms of the 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 table presentation. So we mm -hmm. still we still use the the APA style. So it's uh like in this case, if it so you have a mediation, so you would have uh you know the, the values for the path A where the path A where in the negative aptic is the outcome. So you would then you list down the predictors on the on the first column. Then you have path B where in alcohol consumption and the outcome. So your predictors there would be negative affect. Uh, social support and the interaction between negative affect and social support. So, uh, I can probably, um, if if you will be kind enough to to send an email, I can probably share you like a reporting table of yeah. of these kinds of model. But still, Dr. Melgar is still the slopes that we are that we are reporting. Mm, the slopes. slopes. Okay. Yes, the the standardized slope. The standardized error, then the 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 standardized mm -hmm. slope and the p values. Those those are still the values that we report. Then we have another table for the indirect effects, the total effect and the uh yeah, the indirect effect, the total and the direct effect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking. So are there any other questions? We still have five minutes to go. So if you guys have any questions for Dr. Bator, uh, feel free to unmute yourself if you can or use the chat box. Okay, so while waiting for another question, so you mentioned uh, Dr. Bator. So, so this is similar to like if you're doing a more complex um, mediated moderation or moderated mediation is that you have to actually do like some model testing, right? So like if it's like a same sort of thing, you start with an empty model and then you add one variable and then the other just to see if the if it's making any significant difference 
in the way that you present data did i understood that yes correct? yes it's very last so it's really it's really model testing model building so when we start with a very simple uh model so that and 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 the, if you if you go through the process that we did since day one like you have you do a simple regression first then you add more 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 predictors using like multiple regression approach just on your just a kind of uh, really doing some due diligence in your data analysis process. Then you, you test the mediation only, then you add the interaction. So that, that kind of process is really helpful to, to see uh, what each variable is doing. Because I think that's one of the challenge when we're adding more variables uh, is accounting. And that, that's why the, the question of Dr. Melgar is, is very important. Like how do you now account for the the effect of this because the the effect of each variable when there are there are a lot of variables is very difficult to trace so building that going through that that process of building and testing models is is really really helpful in in examining this one not all of those models that you examine will be included in the report so it, the the journal would only need to have the 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 final results as is uh and but it, it helps us as some form of preliminary analysis to go through that very simple simpler mo models first thank you and you mentioned about like um due diligence and i thought of something that we we did not cover in this but something that maybe we can look into the future is about okay we call this data cleaning but data is not a fish we don't clean them so but that sort of thing right data preparation actually is also a good way to put it so are there any other questions oh uh we are thinking about qualitative data but um one of the challenges though is that um we are trying to find for we will definitely have the fundamentals but in terms of analysis like if we want software comparison that's kind of hard for for like global health equity right because like they are expensive those software, but we are definitely looking into that. So um, are there any other more questions or comments? Because like um, Dr. Neff, like there are a lot of um, um, affirmation to what you did. So so thank you. It was a very good presentation. And and if there are no more questions, so we would like to thank Dr. Bator for, for and all of you for 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 being patient with us, staying with us for the two sessions. We hope that you have learned so much from this and that we could you continue to support our our events and if there are things that you would like uh, for us to offer feel free to send me an email my email address is ma uh, felipe v at icuddr.org and um you can uh, thank you carly so that we will be able to actually um try to respond to to the needs of our members to the best of our ability and if you have time next week isop and icuddr will have a, a joint conference a joint webinar on co-creation of community-based prevention uh, please do register and we hope to see you there so if there is nothing else so that's it for us today thank you once again and we have to see you in our succeeding events have a good day everyone goodbye